Hi guys, it is a cool rainy night here in the end times, getting late into the evening on Monday night, September 14th, 2015, uh, and I'm just now getting onto my computer. I have been working like a Mexican all day, just finished another Mexican immigration rant. Uh, about all the Mexicans trying to steal my job out here digging dirt. I should wish it wasn't dark. I would, I would go show you what I've been doing today. But anyway, I'm done with that. I'm back to being my old uh, crotchety, uh, curmudgeonly, doomsday, anti-natalist, doomsday prophet, eco-Nazi. And um, I, I was trying to refrain from doing yet another rant on this. Uh, do I call this three-part documentary right here on YouTube called Human? Just simply called Human uh, that I definitely encourage you to watch. Uh, I, I've already had several rants about it and, and I guess there's one uh, there, there's Another one coming. I guess the first rant I did was called an anti-natalist reviews the human documentary. So I can't name the rant this, but I had only watched one of the three parts. So now I've watched the full three parts, the full four and a half hours. So I should be naming this uh, this rant an anti-natalist reviews the human documentary. But anyway, I guess I'm going to name it. Just you borrow a headline from U.S. News and World Report coming out today asking the question, is baby fever real? Is baby fever real? And uh, I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs out of here because this really makes me, makes me want to puke uh, about the science of baby fever. The, the, meaning the uncontrollable human urge to have a baby completely I, I, I am I am thrilled to say I'm 55 years old I have never since the day I was born on any cell of my body right down to my sperm cells I have never had the urge to have a baby. I, I have always felt, I, I mean, when I, when I was a baby, certainly by the time I was 10 years old, I understood that I was never going to have a baby, which is why I got a vasectomy at age 22. The single greatest decision, hands down, bar none, that I have ever made in my entire life was getting a vasectomy at age 22 before I ever let one of those little planet-eating little bundles of joy out of the bag. But anyway, just a couple of paragraphs. The Science of Baby Fever. While few researchers have studied baby fever, a 2012 study in the journal Emotion confirmed it is a real phenomenon that both women and men report experiencing. Speak for yourself. Rather than simply wanting a baby due to society's expectations or winding up with a baby as a result of the desire for sex. This is uh, study author Gary Brace from Kansas State University. Quote, there is something distinct that is going on where people want to have children specifically. So what causes baby fever? What causes the single biggest mass delusion, I would say, on, on planet Earth? Uh, probably, if you had to look for one cause for the downfall of planet Earth, it would be baby fever. Baby fever. So what causes baby fever? 
Th now, this one is interesting, what, what, what I'm getting ready to talk about from this human thing, because it, it, it flies directly in the face of what you will see on this human documentary. Braze's recent research has found that baby fever is often influenced by both being around youngsters and life circumstances that support raising a child. And this is mentioned several other times with, with interviewing, you know, interviewing this young woman. You know, she has baby fever, but she understands that she is not at a financial point in her life where she would feel right bringing a child into this life. And, and this is an American woman. Are you following me? Uh, she understands that she uh, is not financially prepared. Uh, and the in the closing comment from the, this guy Bray is doing the study, quote, you should look at your circumstances, meaning your life circumstances, certainly one of them being the financial. Are, 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 are you just going to be abusing this child by bringing him on? And I'm not even talking about the effects on the planet right now. I'm just simply talking about the effects on the kid. You should look at your circumstances and you should consider what would be the best thing considering your other goals in life. And that's how that article ends. So anyway, guys, this will be my segue to this, uh, back to this, uh, you, you know, I want to say excellent documentary. Uh, this, this human documentary that, that somehow Google is, is behind. I, I, I'm a little unclear exactly how Google Corporation is connected to this, uh, to, to this thing. And as I say, I, I, I jumped the gun a little bit by coming out with a rant only after part one. It was really part three. It was the first half of part three that I'm referring to here. As I say, I've already gotten hit with copy via, copyright violations by playing snippets of part one and part two. So I'm not about to goddamn play. You have to go on yourself. So this is the human... Uh, documentary part three, the first half of it. And what they're talking about is the definition of happiness. Of happiness. And so what they do is these, is these filmmakers, they interview, I don't know, in this segment, I'm guessing 12 to 15 people from all over the planet and virtually everyone that they interview about this, this this whole section what is happiness is was there anybody from the US even interviewed but what it was was basically people living in abject poverty abject poverty and asking them, what is your definition of, uh, of happiness? I absolutely love this one guy, this sub-Saharan African. Uh, they, they interviewed him, and he went off on his new motorcycle that he actually wanted to bring it to bed with him under the covers and sleep with his new motorcycle that that he parks his motorcycle right by his bed so he can smell the engine the fossil fuel engine all night i mean the guy talking about his motorcycle like uh, you know like his lover it was truly twisted then this other woman i don't know where she was from i believe latin america 
just talking about her definition of happiness is arriving at home and seeing walking into her house and seeing her refrigerator and her washing machine. Her refrigerator and her washing machine is her definition of happiness. But virtually everybody else, everybody else that they interviewed, female and male, as I say, I think every one of them living in abject poverty, take a wild guess what their definition of happiness was. Having children. The little bundles of joy. These people who have absolutely zero business, and, and I'm not talking about the planet right now, of course I am, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, right now, what I am talking is, is, is about just the absolute child abuse, bringing a child I I into their lives of uh, 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 that if, if, you know, I'm talking just what in America would pass for the most poverty-stricken welfare mother living in some goddamn run-down tenement uh, in, in East St. Louis, or, 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 or maybe some Native American woman out on, on some guy in, in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, or, or some goddamn hillbilly from Kentucky. It, 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 compared to the people that they were interviewing, some hillbilly, uh, unemployed, coal miner, uh, meth uh, addict, tweaker, in uh, in Kentucky uh, would look like uh, the goddamn Queen of England compared to them. And you should have seen their eyes just lighting up. It's hopeless, people. I mean, watching this, I just literally felt, I mean, it was like just when I thought I could I, I could not get any more hopeless about the future of the planet that the collective intelligence of this planet that there was some I mean, not I mean not I mean I, I, it, it, it's hard for me to get any more hopeless about the state of the planet but after watching human You know, I mean, it was, after all, guys, the name of the documentary was Human. The name of the documentary wasn't Elephant. The name of the documentary wasn't Rhino. The name of the documentary wasn't Orangutan or Gorilla or Chimpanzee, all of which are going to be extinct by, by the year 2100. No, it was about uh, human was the name of the, the name of the documentary wasn't even Earthling because uh, you better believe if you went to any other Earthling on this planet outside of humans and, and you asked them what what is your definition of happiness it would be that these sons of bitches go the way of the goddamn dinosaur you know and we can get back. To, to making things right on this planet. Four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. I uh, watched this documentary called Human. In four and a half hours, the words overpopulation. So all of this pro-breeding flag-waving, uh, pro-breeding, uh, not, not, never did you hear the words overpopulation, carrying capacity, overshoot, 
ecological footprint. You never heard the words global warming or climate change uttered one time in, uh, in four and a half hours. I don't believe you ever heard the word pollution uttered in four and a half hours. That the, the, they gave 20 minutes to gay rights. I had my rant about that. Google, you know, looking at humans in the year 2015, the state of humanity, of uh, just where humans are in, in the year 2015, they figured that 20 minutes to gay marriage was about right. Never mentioned, never mentioned any of those words I just went through. They did make it very clear. Now, don't get me wrong. They made it extremely clear whose fault it is for the state of humanity in the year 2015, meaning the miserable wretched, hopeless, tragic state of humanity is people like Donald Trump. It, it's uh, it, it's the, uh, not just the one percenters, but probably the, the 20 percenters. Their percentage that includes uh, people like you and me, meaning Americans, it's Americans' fault. You know, we, we get it already, guys. Uh, they, they made it abundantly clear that overconsumption by rich people, overconsumption, eating more than their fair share of the planet, and income equality by, by these rich, these greedy, rich sons of bitches like Donald Trump. Uh, they are the reason that the state of humanity uh, is in it. They, they get it, okay? They drilled it into our heads for four and a half hours. Do, do they think we're stupid? Do they think we're stupid that we don't get it? That, uh, uh, that global industrial capitalism income inequality and overconsumption of this planet eating shit are are are, are some very good reasons why this uh, this planet is in the shape it's in but but what they completely this is what I don't get clearly this uh filmmaker I can't remember his name he's some French guy I don't get it uh the man is obviously not not stupid and I'm sorry I can't give him credit. The man is not stupid. So, he has to understand. He has to understand that overpopulation is, uh, is, is behind it all. If nothing else... He, he has to understand it's, it's all part of a two-headed or three-headed snake. But these people, uh, these, these sub-Saharan uh, garbage pickers with their eight goddamn kids in their tin shack, uh, it, is, it has nothing to do their decision to have these kids, they're just pursuing their happiness as garbage pickers in, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. They are they are innocent victims. Uh, they are pure as driven snow. They are defenseless, innocent, blameless victims of a a, a corporate capitalist uh, global industrial system that uh, by its very nature has to have the vast majority of the, the, the citizens in the system living lives in the ninth ring of hell to protect these fat ass pigs like Donald Trump wanting wanting to send these uh, Mexican migrants uh, back to their own country because 
they're they're stealing all of these jobs picking strawberries from Americans. You know, guys, I ain't buying it, and 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 I'm so mystified by it because so much of the rest of the, so much of the of of uh, of the rest of this four and a half hours. And I need to, for people who haven't seen my other rants, how what it, that is divided between interviews with humans from all over the planet. And then it's that's that's one major part. And the other major part of it is this is this uh, aerial photography. These these long shot pans pan shots uh, of these scenes, and uh, where, where with no voiceover, they they usually play some sort of classical music, and that's what got me these copyright violations. So, but other than that part about the happiness, so much of the interviews with dozens, uh, probably, well, probably well over a hundred people, other than the happiness part and, and that horse shit, uh, goddamn horse shit uh, about gay marriage, I except for those two parts of the documentary. So much of the interview is is how these people's entire worthless, wretched, miserable, poverty stricken lives are centered around their children. You want to reach in the screen and you want to strangle them. You want to slap them when they're talking about how their six children go to bed hungry at night, that they, they, that they can't feed their six children because of people like Donald Trump. Uh, it's Donald Trump's fault that they, uh, that they can't feed their six kids on their garbage uh, picking salary in, uh, in Lagos, Nigeria is Donald Trump's fault. Maybe if, hell, even if they had two kids, maybe each one of the two kids would have three times as much food to eat than each of the six kids. This this is not rocket science. And this was over and over and over and over again. The these the these people crying, tears pouring out of their eyes. I cannot afford to feed my children. And there's one guy I loved, I mean of course the word deforestation never mentioned about what he was talking about. One reason that he can't afford to feed his children, that there, there's no way to cook any food because he said every single tree has is gone. He says you can no longer even find one branch left that around his village has been so deforested that not one tree is left standing and so he can't cook any food so he said he's laying down and dying that he and his children are going to lay down and die because there are no trees to just all the trees are gone all the trees are gone that's, that's Donald Trump's fault uh, Donald Trump has all those trees. Yeah, that son of a bitch, Donald Trump. He is the reason that man cannot feed his family. And, and, and then the final thing, and this is where I'm wondering is maybe this guy who made this documentary, his name I can't remember, maybe this was all just subterfuge. This whole long 
you know, like moving the camera out kind of like in these Kiwana Scotsy type scenes of just this absolute visions uh, of all of these poverty stricken people living in the ninth ring of hell. Uh, I put some of them on uh, my other rants and I encourage you to read this. And so what what he does in all of the interviews about how, you know, having children is the number one goal in these people's lives. On one hand, while it appears that their number one misery in life, you can lay directly into their decision to have children. Uh... What he does in scene after scene after scene on these things, uh, on these Kiwana Scotsy scenes, as I'm gonna, as I best way I can think to refer to them, is he lets the camera speak. You know, he doesn't need to say the words overpopulation because. The can a picture says a thousand words, so maybe this is his subterfuge, and he's actually. Th and, and, I, and I understand I'm giving this guy way too much credit. I'm quite sure, and, and, and I'm being completely naive. I don't honestly believe this. I'm just kind of hoping that maybe this is what he, that that he knows goddamn well. There's too many people on this planet, and and and. and not just one of the main reasons, the central reason that all of these uh, pathetic people that he interviews are in the shape that they are in is has something to do with Donald Trump, but it has a hell of a lot more to do with the fact that they can't keep their goddamn pecker in their pants. And they have no one to blame but themselves for getting baby fever and 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 being a goddamn rag picker at a sub-Saharan garbage dump and, and making the decision uh, to have eight kids to cram in to their tin hut. And uh, so maybe he's letting the pictures speak a thousand words. It doesn't take a thousand words. There are too many people on this planet. Eight words. And with that, I am going to wrap up my baby fever rant because, you know, it's Monday and I... And I haven't even gone on the mainstream media, so i got to go on the mainstream media to do, since we were talking about the global industrial economy a minute ago, I need to do my economic meltdown roundup rant and bring you a few examples from today's mainstream media on uh, exactly how the global industrial economy, with or without the help, of uh, a sub-Saharan African garbage picker with a house full of uh, house full, a hut full uh, of, of eight starving children uh, without help from them how the global industrial economy is bringing down a planet. But that will be another rant coming up in a minute after I do some research on the mainstream media for this baby fever rant. Drink them if you got them. Bye, guys.